Most schools and many workplaces closed down for yesterday's eclipse. But for many people across the North Country, it was just another work day. Still, some businesses at least gave their employees 20 minutes to get outside and watch the big show. At a hardware store in Canton, workers took it one step further. They slipped up to the roof for a truly celestial view. That's today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from the St. Lawrence County Community Development Program, now accepting applications for the Head Start program to prepare children ages 3 to 5 for school, online at slccdp.org slash head dash start. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Tuesday, April 9th, the day after. First up, remember all the fretting about empty store shelves and gas pumps and total gridlock because of the influx of eclipse chasers? Well, that mostly did not happen. Cars move fairly smoothly in the days and hours leading up to the eclipse with no major delays, just a steady increase in traffic. And then after the eclipse, most major highways like Route 11, I-87, I-81 were busy with some backups. One area had a serious traffic jam hours after the total eclipse. I-87, the North Way, was bumper to bumper from Elizabethtown to Queensbury until around 10 o'clock last night. Between 4 and 6 in the afternoon, right after the eclipse, local traffic on Route 73, which runs between Lake Placid and the North Way, was backed up past Cascade Pass as eclipse viewers headed back home towards Albany and New York City. As the slowdown hit Warrensburg just before the North Way, the Glens Falls Post-Star reports a local pizzeria started serving slices to idling motorists. So it was a regular workday for many people yesterday, but employees at a hardware store in Canton made the best of it. Lucy Grindon was with them and has our story. At Coakley's Home and Hardware Store in Canton, yesterday was mostly just a normal workday. Yes, so we um, always start the day with a fresh batch of popcorn that we hand out to customers. That's Kelly Kugler, the cashier, making the usual free popcorn for customers. A few people wander in looking for a spare plumbing part or a bag of charcoal. But the employees really only have one thing on their minds. As soon as the moon starts moving in front of the sun, everybody's in and out of the parking lot. They share a few pairs of eclipse glasses between them, standing and staring at the sky. Yeah, you can start to see it now. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Pretty soon, just standing in the parking lot isn't good enough. Jason and I decided this would be more comfortable to sit on instead of standing up. So we're going to bring this bench out and adjust it a little bit. What do you think, Jace? Good? Yeah, it's good. That's store manager Agnes White. Jace is eight. His mom is another store employee. With Jace not having school, we had him come over to the store and be with her so he could watch it with her, even though she's working. But a few other store employees decide they want an even better view. We just talked about it this morning. We decided to do it. Back parking lot was cool. Roof. This is the roof. This is way, way cooler. They're going to the roof. Up we go. John Anderson leads me to an upstairs office window. Yeah, that's the way we're going to go. Is we're going to climb out on the rooftop there. All right. Okay, I'm stepping through a big window past an AC unit and stepping out onto the roof of Coakley's in Canton. We're just going to step over this way. So just follow me. And we're going to sit right here. If this were a normal day, Anderson says he'd be filling a big paint order right about now. Instead, he's up here, sitting in a folding chair, watching the sun disappear. There's so little left. Yeah, it's just a tiny little dot. Oh, 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 there it is. Wow, look at that. We can see almost the whole horizon up here. The sky is a rich, milky purple around the sun and the moon, and a bright, beautiful orange where it touches the treetops. Anderson says it looks like a 360-degree sunset. Do you see that, Tony? So cool. Yeah, this is... I don't know, it's pretty breathtaking, honestly. The sun comes back, 
we put the folding chairs away, and we head back downstairs to the store. There's still a couple of hours of work left before everybody can go home, but it really feels like a brand new day. Lucy Grinden, North Country Public Radio, Canton. Bonus non-eclipse story. If you take a drive across the North Country, one thing that you'll notice in almost every community is abandoned buildings. Once populous towns now have abandoned or neglected churches, community centers, and public spaces. In the small town of Louisville in St. Lawrence County, one couple is trying to change that. Anna Williams Bergen has this North Country at Work story. The Old Town Hall in Louisville is a big white building with peeling paint. The tall, arched windows have that ripply effect of really old glass. Going inside feels a little bit like stepping back in time. It has some big echoes in here. Like I said, 17-foot ceilings. So, um, like I said, the stage, this was all put in in the 40s. That's Patty Shirley. She and her husband Bill are restoring the hall, which was built way back in 1900. Most of it is still intact. Hardwood floors, stamped tin tile walls, and ceilings. But that's the original light oak wainscoting. The original floor, is all, it's all the same. This was built 124 years ago, and it's still just as solid as day one. The town of Louisville hasn't used the building since 1974. It was probably going to be demolished when the Shirleys bought it in 2021. I couldn't, I couldn't see this building being torn down. It was too nice of a building. The, everything was, it just needed upkeep. Louisville is a town of about 3,000 people just west of Messina. Patty Shirley has lived here on the same street as the town hall for 40 years. She says it's the best place on earth. But like lots of towns around here, it's been losing population and young residents for decades. Shirley sees restoring the town hall as her part in trying to keep Louisville vibrant, because for a long time, the town hall was the community. This was used for a schoolhouse, court, jail, hospital, it was everything. It was Grange Hall. It was absolutely everything that you could ever need it for back then. They had horrible weather forecasted. Everybody moved into here. It, it was just, this is where the town was. You know, anybody and everybody that was in town came here. Local doctor John O'Brien built the town hall and later sold it to the town for a dollar. There may be a visitor here still. Um, every once in a while, you'll feel the eyes on you. Shirley says there are ghosts here now, but in its heyday, you can tell that this used to be a really happening place. Coat hooks line the walls, the floors are worn in from sports and dancing. Shirley's husband remembers playing basketball there as a Boy Scout. And like any community center, it has its graffiti carved into the bathroom door. Look at here. This is, here's the graffiti. Val plus me. We don't know who wrote that. We have, we have uh, ideas, but this was definitely written in the early 70s, late 60s. The Shirleys want to preserve the hall's old-timey feel with both the architecture and the decorations. They're collecting lots of period furniture at auctions and estate sales. One of their best finds is a mahogany piano built in 1815, which sits perched right on stage. It needs to be tuned, but other than that, it's beautiful. So, Can you, if you play it, like, how bad is it? Is that? It, ha- it has a mahogany soundboard. Piano people will know what this means. It, there's no metal in, there's no metal soundboard, and most of them have a big piece of metal that the strings... This has mahogany. It's all wood. Shirley says they're buying furniture and fixing things up one paycheck at a time. Their goal is to create an event space for people in town to use and bring life back to the historic building. And we will have a dance here again. You know, it's going to be one of the first things we do is have a dance here because a lot of the, the older people in town still remember coming here. You know, this was this was a fun time back in the 60s and early 70s. This was this was fun. The Shirleys want the town hall to be part of Louisville for a long time to come. The best part is I have a daughter who lives on on the same road, and she fully is in agreement that this will be hers when we're gone, and it will keep on going. For now, the Shirleys are still repainting tiles and getting things up and running. They say they hope that one day the town hall will be the center of their community again. For North Country Public Radio's North Country at Work project, I'm Anna Williams-Bergen in Louisville. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org, and great photos and video of the eclipse. Music today by Eddie Lawrence of Moira. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.